Hey guys, and welcome to another War of Imperium session here in Ragnarok Online GGH. We are your casters. My name is James. And my name is MG. And, yep. and uh, yeah, how are you, MG? <laughs> I'm doing good. Yeah. Yeah. And as we can see, MG, right now, we have a lot of people in Krem Hill. Yeah. And sorry, guys, we're a little bit late. Uh, we had to, uh, to fix a few technical difficulties here and mm -hmm. there. But right now, we are going to get back on the action. Of course, we are going to see these people here in Cranfield Castle. They are getting ready to beat every other guild, their opponents here in this <laughs> castle right now. So uh, you can actually go in now, MG. There are yeah, a lot of people go. inside. All right. Okay. So currently, actually, we can see Dominary here just holding the entrance of this castle along with the uh, purple Dominary. So they are just ready getting ready for action here in this castle but you know as they are getting ready of course we want to remind our viewers that we are going to give away codes here in our stream that will be shown in the the lower right portion of our screen right there uh we will show that uh, a bit later on but from the, those codes you can get battle manuals job manuals yeah. blessing scrolls edgy wow. scrolls mystic powders and a fierce blessing and uh, those codes are first come first serve and uh, there's th they are only a one time use code yeah. so the first time uh, so the first one actually to use that code will be able to receive uh, those rewards if you're the second one if you're third one you won't be able to receive anything and it will just show there that the code has been redeemed yep right. Okay, so and, uh, currently, uh, we are seeing uh, Adonis Adonis wow Ooh. Adonis contesting Dominari. This a uh, this is a new one. Yeah, they they are uh, they are gutsy. <laughs> yeah. They're gutsy right now. Uh, <laughs> Dominari still has a consistent number of players playing their guild. Yep. Of course, they are always prepared and ready. Every War of Imperium. Let's see who will actually go against them this time around. Uh, in the last session, I think that was the Cartel. Yes, Cartel. Yeah. I'm I'm waiting to see what nonsense will bring us at, uh, for. Uh, tonight's session and last nightmare because in the last session last nightmare has been a little bit um you know not they, they were not that present yeah they, their presence was not um you know scattered all throughout the whole um the castles um but you know dominari they've been here since the start of course they want to prove that they are the best guild here yes. in roggh and that's why they are consistent in numbers and they're always prepared every War of Imperium session. As you can see right here, they have a lot of members. They are just holding this choke point here in Kremlin Castle. Yep. And I think uh, they're just trying to wait uh, PS Kirtle because earlier on the first um, few uh, minutes of this uh, game, um, I think uh, PS Kirtle is trying to contest uh, some of the Dominaris. But again, Dominari is very hot on PS Kirtle. Maybe that's the reason why uh, Dominari is putting a full force versus um the escartel on this one and as, as you can see right now goons are trying to go in versus uh the purple dominari but again the rolling cutter is doing it and uh, i think goose is having a hard time on uh trying to penetrate that solid portal defense from mm -hmm. uh dominari yeah, but uh, as we can see from the flag here, I think DS Cartel is the owner of this <coughs> castle right now. So uh, they are, I think they are just regrouping their outside of the castle for them yeah. to get ready to push in. But oh, you know, uh, here we go. oh, DS Cartel here is already go. holding this part of the map, so that's why Dominari isn't just uh, pushing uh, up and about. But let's see how DS Cartel can defend this castle. Actually, we can turn off the effects here and uh, every now and then, MG, so we can see what's actually happening. Uh, without those meter storms just falling on the ground right here dragon's breath coming for from both sides actually no coming only from uh, ds cartel as you can see dominari okay. they want to push in ds cartel they are they going to, to have a little bit of hard time right here can you turn the camera for oh. a little bit right there we can see some members of dominari just well going in and uh, penetrating the defense here of ds cartel making sure that they have enough space to uh to attack this cartel right yeah. here but uh let's see if this cartel has defense set up of course uh the defense here in kremlin is always at the third portal of this castle if they have a de defense set up um and dominari didn't actually get ready yet for that attack uh they will have a hard time in that um offense but 
if uh, oh no, there is no defense setup yes. for DS Carter right here. So Dominari will be able to clear this perfectly. Um, you know, without any hiccups or whatsoever. Yes, and still good effort on the side of uh, DS Cartel, knowing that they're facing actually a three guild. Um, having that um, quick sustain, actually, there's a good setup there coming from Dominari. They made sure that the Rune Knights are in front. And most of the players of the S Cartel are having a hard time to take down, uh, take down those Rune Knights on the front line. Having a uh, an opportunity on the side of the S Cartel to cast those uh, multiple long range or me um, arrow storms on their side. So good strategy here coming from um, Dominari. Yeah, uh, I think the strategy of the S Cartel to go for that GVG style uh, defense isn't really ideal. Mm -hmm. um, in a case against Dominari, since they have sheer dominating numbers um, every every Warrior of Imperium session. Yes. Um, I think, you know, the best option for guilds to defend against Dominari right now is to, uh, you know, do a portal defense. Yep. Uh, because that's the best option for guilds uh, if you are outnumbered, because you can hold that with, a f uh, with less players and you can deal much more damage. Yes, I agree. And, uh, and goons, actually. Goons, yeah. uh, we are going to see them right now. They are. Um, they have a lot of members compared to the first few sessions that yeah. we, we actually saw them. Okay, I think uh, mm -hmm. Dominari has their attention now. Um, we saw co a couple of uh, scouts on the side of Dominari moving in at this castle. So I think Dominari is going to push in. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it's going to be a full force or maybe just the uh, purple one. Who's gonna contest this um, yell, which is the guns? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and check. Yeah, but as we can see, or as we as we uh, what we've seen from Dominari, they they are always aggressive. They yep. want to go for that action. They want to go for that mm -hmm. GVG because uh, you know Do Dominari has been dominating since the very start. Aside yeah. from their numbers, their strategy is really um, on point every time. Yep. Uh, because in the last session, um, I, I, I thought they were at a disadvantage when they went against the uh, cartel in Kremhild. Yeah. Um, in the last session, um, you know, they only have, I think, the Red Dominari was the only one who pushed in. Mm -hmm. I thought their numbers weren't enough to actually deal with the uh, cartel at that, at that time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I didn't expect them to come up with a strategy to let their, uh, you know, uh, tanky or uh, AOE damage members like the mechanic to, to go in and push in first to deal damage against the, the defenders and yeah. then the second wave will come in and uh, beat those and clean up the uh, clean up everything that's there yes I agree on that one and um we have a question last uh, last session right mm -hmm. um, I think uh, is do we have any adjustment on the lineup in terms of uh, of the escort then because we saw last session um, if they want to take down this uh, three kill, they need to have those uh, mechanic up and running. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty excited to see uh, if the S cartel has that lineup already. I uh, think. Well, you know, uh, for you to actually utilize the mechanic really well, you need more members, and you need a lot of support players because you need. More Suras in because of course you want to disable those damage yeah. dealers for your mechanic to be able to go in really really quickly and use that suicidal destruction. But if you don't have a lot of members right there, you are going to lack that firepower. And uh, you know your suicidal dest dest destruction can only do so much. Yes. You still need to pick off members that are left. So you need more damage dealers in. Of course, uh, after that suicidal destruction, then what's next? The mechanic can actually use other skills as well. But you know, suicidal destruction is the most destructive. How can I say destructive yeah. um, skill that uh, a mechanic can use in a war from Perim situation? Yes, I agree on that one. And yeah, you're correct. So hopefully, we can see an, a quick adjustment coming from the Cartel on that one. And I think uh, they learned their lesson last uh, session that having those uh, mechanics can actually really uh, turn turn things. Um, on the side of that uh, of that yield. Yes. Okay, so I think uh, Dominari is just gonna sweep away 
the goons um, line up here on the defense and they're just gonna mm -hmm. take this Imperium easily and yeah you're just gonna cut it yes and I want to uh, you know tell the viewers that I am reading the comments right now we are reading the comments right now so if you do want to give a shout out to your friends your guild mates or your uh, what, whatever you want to say in the chat just <clears> keep it nice uh, we are going to read it but we are going to screen it first <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, we're going to do our best into translating um, whatever you say into English but we can only read in Filipino and English so uh, if you do want to shout out or if you do want to shout out your guild just type it in the comment section uh, everything will do and uh, we have a comment here from from Alan good evening casters please shout out RKM gaming guild all right oh okay yeah. um, let's go yeah and uh you know MG right now we are seeing uh, our you know the, the small size and the medium size skill step yeah. like goons um, you know because they were not really that present in the last few War of Imperium sessions. Yes. But right now, they actually held that castle and uh, made sure to defend it a little bit before, you know, getting taken down by the bigger, num bigger the Dominary Guild. Yes. Okay. And uh, regarding that, I think uh, the S-Cartel is ready to fight uh, one Dominary Guild on this one. Mm -hmm. Maybe if, uh, maybe Red or Purple Dominary can actually mm -hmm have this quick session or a quick fight session with uh, the S cartel that would be really nice mm -hmm. instead of having a, uh, a three-man uh, sweep or a three-man guild pushing on one guild so mm -hmm. hopefully we can see a red or purple dominari having this a uh, 1v1 session with them yes and uh, look at what's happening right now actually dominari hasn't uh set up right now they are going to prepare themselves for this push against ds cartel if ds cartel actually loses this fight they can go and uh, use the flag to go in uh, really really quickly and uh, they all need to actually uh, prepare themselves to yep. battle uh dominari for uh for a long fight exactly because you know you know dominari from what we've seen uh from the last few war of Imperium sessions they are quick in regrouping Yes. So if they lose a battle or they if, they, or if their members get taken down, they are quick into returning back into the action. I agree on that one. And um, seeing the lineup of this cartel, I think they don't have uh, the mechanics. But again, Ooh, I think uh, this cartel needs to swap their uh, or needs to change their uh, approach versus Dominari. They need to take the first move on this one unless... They're just gonna pack it out, but I think uh, Dominari is losing members right now. Ooh, suicidal wow. destruction, Bo. Ooh. I, I saw that suicidal destruction, but I didn't see that mechanic. Actually, that mechanic was hidden. I just saw the text suicidal destruction. Wow. I just, just saw that text, and uh, a lot of members of DS cards just went down. Wow. That's, so that's uh, why I, I said earlier that you need a lot of support members if you are going to utilize a mechanic in your lineup. Yes. But we can actually go in right now, MG. Uh, we can check things out uh, in the preamp area. Uh, maybe the S Cartel will have their defense set up here in Hohenchwango. Ho but, you know, go, uh, rather, Dominari will be falling back. Maybe go to the entrance of that <coughs> castle. And uh, maybe hold things off for now. Uh, so what you can see, DS Carta actually conquered a uh, different castle right now. We are back in Kremhild as a Dominari is actually just pushing every other guild that they can see. Um, nonsense occupied Rothenburg and Adonis and uh, Würzburg. Yep. And uh, we can see a few guilds here and there. Steel Wolves, Arsenal, uh, Pirates, Goons, Nemesis Armada, Chow. Uh, and uh, I'm just waiting. Um, I think for Fratres. Yeah. For Fratres. Yeah. Fratres. We haven't seen Fratres um, in the last session, I think. Oh, no. I think we've seen them, but they only have a few members in the last session. Yeah. I, um, I think, James, what um, the S Cartel needs to do this on, on this session, they need to take the initiative of taking the first push. They have been uh, very unsuccessful every time that they're just waiting Dominari on pushing. I think the, mm -hmm. the, what they're trying to do is they just want to counter out um, 
dominari when it comes uh, to pushing. But again, the result of that strategy is not successful. We've been seeing this uh, since the last Warf Imperium. So I think they need to make an adjustment on pushing. They need to take that uh, first um, punch to a Dominari instead of waiting it uh, to come to their guild. So they need to... Uh... <laughs> you, know, you know the timing, MG, but of, um, from when you said punch? Yeah. We just saw a guillotine <laughs> fist come out. I, I know. <laughs> oh, the timing, man. The timing. Yeah. But anyway, um, I think... Um, I, I think the best option for the cartel, if they want to go up against Dominari, is that they need to do a portal defense instead of this GVG style, um, you know, GVG style hold. Uh, because if they are going for this type of defense, they are going to be at a disadvantage because we all know Dominari has uh, a lot more numbers than the cartel right here. Okay. So they are at a disadvantage from numbers alone, and uh, you know in strategy, you know it, uh, it differs every battle. Yes. Because I think if they are equal in numbers, uh, they might actually battle each other out. Mm -hmm. One might lose at a time, and uh, you know um, one might dominate. But we we don't know until that actually happens. But um, I think from what we've seen here. Uh, Dominari has a uh, strategy set up every time, so that's why they aren't losing battles in a in a GVG style battle la such as this one. Yeah. Because earlier in that last battle that we saw, DS Cartel was the first one who actually went in and tried to deal against Dominari. Yes. But you know they they lost in the battle because I think they were a little bit too anxious. Uh, some some of the members um, maybe overextended no support coming from the behind yep. uh, because you know the members that overextended just got beaten up by the members of Dominari yeah. yep and the same time um, like you mentioned earlier if they want to win against um, Dominari again the cooldown for the this um, self-destruct on on the uh, mechanic is 5 minutes so if mm -hmm. they want to take the fight they need to take the fight now or if they not if they're not gonna take the fight, they're gonna suffer on that uh, refresh cooldown on the side of the mechanic. So they will deal with a uh, massive suicides again on their side. So if they want to take the fight, they need to take it now. They need to capitalize on the cooldowns of the enemy in order for them to do a quick counter push versus Dominari. Yeah, and I like the strategy of the mechanic of Dominari. Um, he is not the one on the front line he's always in the middle or at the back then when the action actually happens he just goes in and uses that suicidal yeah. destruction to beat everyone out yep and uh, i think that's a good strategy for dominaria as the as cartel already is regrouped here in hong kong Pongo. and i think uh yeah. while they are doing so maybe after that battle we can actually scout different castles here and there but you know for our viewers who are actually new to ragnarok online and uh, doesn't know what's happening right now this is war of imperium war of imperium is a game feature that allows guilds to fight each other in order to conquer castle for their guild to get benefits and special advantage so, uh, advantages so what are the benefits and special advantages you can get exclusive drops from the castles like uh, in uh, in uh, Scarlet Palace Scarlet, there yeah. is the um, uh, Emblem of the Sun God which you can use to craft a Solar God Helm mm -hmm. and uh, you know there are a total of four castle locations Frontera Valkyrie Realm, Payon Balder Greenwood Lake Realm, uh, Geffen Britonia Realm and Aldebaran Luina yeah. Realm which we are at right now. For each realm there are five castles castles each for a total of 20 castles so they are open every session and uh you know guilds are just fighting to get that economy and uh, those treasure chests for their guilds advantages yep and for you to be are able to participate in warf imperium you need to have that guild approval in yes. your guild skill okay yeah speaking of uh, warf imperium i think we're gonna have our third match here coming from <laughs> 
again DS Cartel and uh, Dominari and right now we're seeing Land Protector uh, putting um, on the floor right now DS Cartel is trying to move slowly on this one multiple AOEs is dropping in front of both guilds and um, I think uh, DS Cartel is trying to do a quick push on this one they need to be careful on that Dragon's Breath but again DS Cartel is very persistent on pushing they're gonna go uh, go uh, deep on this one and uh, Dominari is losing a couple of players in front and right now the Escartel is on an advantage right now and Ooh. as we can see everyone is uh oh I think uh they managed to connect um a massive AOE on the side of the Escartel. Mm -hmm. The Escartel lost a lot of members on those uh arrow showers as well. Yeah. Actually, this cartel did a good job into holding yeah. in that battle against Dominari right there. Uh, they did really well. Yep. But, you know, that that Sura came a little bit too late. Um, he could have used that curse circle when everything was going, was, yeah. was happening around. Uh, maybe he could have went in and used that curse circle immediately or windmill, windmill curse circle immediately uh, to prevent those... Um, those uh, those attackers from actually dealing damage like those rune knights and um, rangers because as we what i saw from uh, dominari is that their their rune knight and rangers are kind of in front to deal mm -hmm. damage um to their opponents before they actually go into their um you know to their kind of their guild spot yes all right and uh, so maybe we can actually take it. a look at the difference though yeah yeah to be fair, they almost had it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, they almost had it. But like what I said, Dominari is quick in the grouping. Yes, that's why they were able to quickly go in and out of the battle. If they lose a fight or if they get taken down, they will be, be they will be able to immediately go in and uh, come back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, while well, you are uh, actually scouting around what's happening right here, I do want to mention that we have uh, events here or in game events here in um, ROGGH. Currently, of course, we've been mentioning this since uh, a long time ago, but of course, we want to mention it again for to remind you guys that there are events currently in the game, like the Heroes Trail. Because the crack into the mansion left by Satan Morak when he ran away allowed Rune Midgard to discover the new world. Now, scientists have discovered a new way to exploit its power, time traveling. By using their new device, you can join them in the spatial rift. From there, you can still reach the new world, but you can also explore past times. For more information about this event, of course, you can visit our website rl.gmjoy.asia.com or join the ROGGH Discord. Links can be found in the pinned comment or in this, the description of the stream. So we are going to check that pinned comment out in a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are going to check it out in a bit. But yeah, you can find those links right um, there. And uh, yeah, we have a lot more events here in uh, ROGGH. And uh, you know, like what I mentioned, the Heroes Trail is the, just the, uh, another one of those events. And uh, aside from those in-game events, we also have a lot of, um, you know, outside events or uh, real-life events. <laughs> so, how can I say it? How can I say it? Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, community events. Community, community events. events, yeah. Oh, that's Suicidal Destruction! Woohoo! Oh, man. Uh, actually, that Suicidal Destruction coming from Goons took out three members or four members from Arsenal right there. And, uh... Goods actually doing a good job in yeah. defending this. Uh, not really defending, but they are just battling each yeah. other in the entrance of Fat Grid Castle. Yes, and to be fair, I think this is a good matchup. Goods versus Arsenal in a head on yeah, match. Yeah, they have even numbers too. Yeah. So I'm very excited to uh, see the fights uh, between Goods and Arsenal right now. Mm -hmm. Arsenal is regrouping on the left side, and I think uh, Goods managed to recognize that, and uh, they're going to take their right side definitely on this one. So maybe they mm -hmm. called in big RG on the right side, and some of the Dominaris are trying to, uh, you know, try to scream in on this fight. Dominari from the north side coming in, destroying uh, goons on the right side. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know Arsenal, they don't have a lot of numbers, but they are always proven to be deadly 
in yeah. every yeah. situation because they have like these uh, core members for their guild that they are able to take down the specific uh, members that they need in order yes. to beat uh, to beat uh, their opponents. And I think they are evenly matched against goons or nonsense. Yep. But I think maybe James... they can actually deal with uh, Adonis as well. I yeah. think they are even in numbers as well. I think if they can actually uh, get multiple players inside their guild with a proper setup of um, of classes, I think uh, they can compete the versus Dominari. I mean the purple mm -hmm. one. The purple. Mm -hmm. one. I think they can fight the purple one. Um, it's just I think. Currently, right now, their numbers is kind of on the medium size um, numbers. Where uh, in Dominari is on, uh, they have like 30 plus members on their mm -hmm. current roster. So, 30 yes. or 40. So, yes, yeah. having uh, those extra classes on Arsenal, I'm 100% sure that they can compete versus the Purple Dominari. Yes. And I think, you know, some of their members might re-roll for them to get a better handle of the situation every war from bearing session and uh speaking of uh leveling characters and re-rolling oh, we do have yeah. a 50 percent exp boost until august 1 10 a.m so enjoy a 50 percent experience boost until august 1 10 a.m yeah. And uh, it will actually help our players into into re-rolling or making new characters or for new players as well to get into the action really, really quicker. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you are going to pair it up with certain items such as oh, yeah. your premium, you your plus the rewards that you're going to get. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, make oh, sure yeah, you uh... can make sure to be the first one to call him those, uh, <laughs> those redeem codes. Yes. And... Uh, and uh, you might ask, how do you redeem the code? All you need to do is to log in the website, uh, ro.genjoy.asia.com, log in your uh, ROGGH account. Yeah. account or GEnjoy account, and then uh, click on membership, click on redeem code, then just be the first one to type in the code and you'll be able to receive those prizes. Yes. Again, I can't stress it enough, be the first one. Because only the first one who redeems the code will be able to receive those rewards. Yes. Again, the rewards for those codes are uh, Battle Manual, a Job Manual, Blessing Scrolls, Agi Scrolls, Mystic Powders, or Tears of Blessing. Yep. And right. uh, I think James, it's a sign that they need to make a mechanic now. <laughs> I, think, uh -huh. I think the mechanic right now is, is actually one of the good metas right now. Especially, yeah, but actually, uh, mechanic is not not that easy to level up. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe Maybe that's one of the reasons why, though. Yeah. It's not it's not that easy to level up a mechanic, especially if you want to max it out. Yeah, but again, the uh, we can actually saw uh, see the uh, firepower of the mechanic on yes, Cartel versus Dominari. Um, yeah. Dominari has been very successful with the mechanic um, strategy or mechanic meta that they've been uh, putting. Um, mm -hmm. Since I think that's gonna be a, a since two weeks ago, so mm -hmm. I think that's gonna be a really good meta if uh, some of the guilds can actually adopt that. Currently, we have Goons Arsenal trading uh, AOEs on their side, and right now Goons are trying to uh, go in on the stack of Arsenal. Arsenal right now managed to paddle back a bit, and they answer back with the quick AOEs coming from their um, Warlocks. Warlocks right now are casting heavy AOEs. You can go to the side. And... You died. Yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> on how intense the action is. The spectator <laughs> actually died in the battle. Okay. And uh, maybe we can actually do it in the, in the side view angle so we can actually see both perspectives okay. here. Um, I tried, uh, I tried, I tried, I <laughs> tried. Yeah, maybe you can turn our, tilt your yeah. camera, camera for a bit. Yeah, so that we can see both perspectives right there. As actually Dominary pushes in right now. Uh, and Arsenal is going to have a hard time defending or not actually they're not actually the defenders of this castle since Nancy's is the one holding it. Yep. But they are going to have a hard time dealing with the Dominari right here since they're genetic Oh no! I think they are allied with one another. Are they? Um Arsenal Dominari. Oh no 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 no. no, no. no. They they just didn't attack that genetic was just sitting over there. Oh. He just he just sat down. Maybe the, the, yeah. didn't uh, see that he actually got uh maybe he got windmilled. 
by the Asura. Yep. Not really sure. Okay. But so you know, uh, so what you can see from the flag right here, Nani is the one holding this guild, and. Uh, Dominari is going to be able to push in. Let's see if Nonsense has a defense set up right now. No defense coming no defense, from yeah. Nonsense currently. And, uh, you know, Dominari is going to be able to push in this castle really, really well. They don't have any obstruction here in this castle. So oh. they will be able to take this uh, very, very quickly without any, without taking that much damage. Yep. So a question from Erwin, what class is fast to level up? I just downloaded the game. Uh, in my opinion, the fastest class to level up is going to be a ranger. Because ranger, you can level warlock. up solo. Yeah. No, I think for a warlock, you need to be able to, you yeah. know, uh, have a party. Have a decent form party. a party. Yeah, form yeah. a party, have a decent party that can grind with you for a long time. But for a ranger, you can level up solo. Uh, of course, if you can uh, use that Arrow Storm build, you won't mm -hmm. have a hard time even when you're just a hunter or a sniper or you go, uh, you rebirth into a sniper, then later on into a ranger. You won't have a hard time leveling up because, you know, the items are fairly cheap. You can get them for um, a few million zenny. Yeah. All right. And it's actually, um, snipe. ranger is actually on demand as well. Um, because again, a uh, ranger can provide those um, spike spike damage on your on the side of your guild, and at the same time you have the traps as well if you want to delay your enemies as well. So you can you can be a utility. At the same time you need, uh, you can actually be a uh, you know damager. I see that well. Someone's just throwing acid bombs against you. <laughs> yeah, that will cost a lot. <laughs> Since, you know, I think Acid Bombs, uh, Acid Bomb set. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, it's actually it a lot. Terminator. It's really, uh, it's, it's really expensive. Terminator, it's really yeah. expensive to, um, to be a genetic. Again, if you are, if you want to have that Acid Bomb, uh, build to damage your opponents, it's yeah. really expensive, expensive to be a genetic. But again, it's effective, especially with the high def characters. He can actually just uh, two shot or one shot uh, most of the enemies if he has yeah. the uh, perfect build and right, right items as well. Yeah. But if you know, uh, I think one of the classes that you can quickly level up is going to be um, a genetic. If you are al alchemist, it's going to be hard, a little bit hard. But when you become a creator, it's going to be fairly easy. But you need a lot of zenny. If you have a lot of zenny, if you have a lot of supplies to have those. Um, Acid bombs that you can just bump all the way. Maybe it's easier to level it up. Yeah. It's quicker and easier to level it up though. But yeah. it's going to be really, really expensive to level up uh, a creator if you're or a genetic if you're going to use that. Yep, I agree on that. And yeah, I think Dominari uh, managed to wipe Arsenal on the north side of this castle. Um, they have like two guilds now. I'm not sure if there's another guild on the north side. Mm -hmm. I think there's no guild yeah. on the north side. And actually, uh, I think we have yeah we have a guide here, uh, but it's not quite complete just yet. Uh, I, I think it's uh, if you want to have if you want to take a look at the guide, it's R O R O G G H dot com. Yeah. So you can take a look at the guides uh, presented right there, uh, and I think you will have a brief view of what you can use to level up really really quickly here in. R O G G H, and uh, yeah, uh, he says here even the caster, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even the spectator be died because you know the battle earlier on was really intense and everything was just happening right there, exactly. and uh, because of uh, the burning sensation that the spectator I mean... field. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because of the one the the burning sensation that the spectator felt, you know, you just yeah. burned and died right there. But yeah, in my opinion, the quickest character that you can use to level up and really farm uh, well is uh, Ranger. Yes. Yeah, Ranger. I think no one can come come close if you want to farm yeah, up and level up. Even really, in really classic quickly. days, I think Rangers are or the hunters are the fastest. Yeah. Yeah, we can use that to really really farm. Yeah. quickly 
Um, and it's not that reliant in, uh, for items. Yes. Yeah. It's more um, on the stat side. Um, if you have the perfect stat or if you have the right stats to put in, plus a mm-hmm. decent item, maybe like um, an NPC item with a plus 5 maybe or plus mm-hmm. 6, that should do a decent damage on on different maps that you're trying to mm-hmm. go. So, yeah. 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 And the, the items, yeah, like what I mentioned earlier, the, the items of the ranger is fairly cheap if you're just going to level, use it to level up and farm. Um, I think you get you can get items for really, really cheap. Yeah, you can, take, you can, you can make do with Eden items and a hunting bow or a hunter bow and hunting arrows or maybe an elven bow if you have a little bit more zenny right there. And uh, yeah, as what we are seeing right here, Dominari is just holding this castle. Maybe let's take a look at different castles right now. Every we can scout around. As uh, I want to mention another event that we have here in uh, ROGGH, it is ROGGH second seasonal event, the Noodle Festival. And the Noodle Festival of Malandos bears strange origins but has since evolved into a popular festival well loved by everyone. Each year, the cat citizens of Malangdo spend full months eating noodles to celebrate the discovery of strange new lands and creatures. Now, they invite you to join in on the fun with them. To speak to spec, uh, speak to Festa receptionist to join the festivities yeah. till August 4, 2022. If you want to know more information about the event, you can visit our website r.gnjoy.asia.com or join the ROGGH Discord. Yes. Links can be found in the pinned comment. And yeah, make sure to check it out. Yep. Um, speaking of noodles, James, are you a fan of uh, spicy noodles? Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little yeah. bit. <laughs> you know, spicy noodles, uh, they are really good if you're really, really hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, at night eating spicy noodles, uh, you know, this is off topic, but I think uh, some of the viewers um, might might relate yeah. to this. Um, in the evening, of course, um, it's a past if it's past midnight. I think eating spicy noodles is best at that time. Yeah. Or e- eating noodles in general. <laughs> well, that is best at past midnight. Well, every time that uh, somebody says like uh, noodles, you know, it's actually for me, it's it's like a nostalgic vibe way back uh, when I was uh, playing Ragnarok. Look what's happening right there. A crit type. Uh, Guilty Gross is actually trying to deal with a Shadow Chaser. The Shadow Chaser can do anything. She's just sustaining it. Yeah, actually. Ooh. Okay. Okay. He's Shadow trying formation. to... Uh, rolling cutter. Now, uh, there's the rolling cutter. And, you know, that Guilty Gross actually is not going to uh, yeah. try and deal damage any further right there. Uh, you know, you can see the manhole coming from the Shadow Chaser. And I think that Guillotine Cross is stuck right now. Rolling Cutter oh. coming from uh, another Guillotine Cross right here. I think you can hide the Noodle Festival banner now. And that right. manhole uh, coming from that sh- Shadow Chaser is really, really annoying to deal with. <laughs> and, and it's kind of cute because if you get caught by a manhole, you can just see the, the head sprite. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so... as we are going to take a look at different castles uh, right now. And uh, yeah, if you do want to shout out your guild, your friends, your mates, or uh, whoever they are, make sure to type in the comment section. Just uh, be nice in the comment section. And uh, yeah, we will read that if it's in English or in Filipino. We, we will try our best to translate it if it's in Filipino. Oh, NS. All right. Let's go. The nonsense. Uh, actually, they've been really quiet in the last War of Imperium session. But right now, we are seeing them defend here uh, a castle in... Uh, uh, this is Geffen. This is uh, in Britonia realm. Uh, Britonia. Britonia. Yeah. yeah, this is in Britonia realm. So, uh, yeah, they are just going to try and uh, maybe hold this castle. Let's see later on if they are going to deal with some opponents right there. Mm-hmm. But... You know, uh, knowing the other guilds like Dominari, nonsense isn't going to be spared here. Since Dominari wants to battle everyone. Yeah. They want to battle everyone and they want to beat them up. <laughs> I think they just want to compete to every guild that they, uh, that they see here. 
especially yeah. with the no- large numbers and I think they're just following um, DS Cartel at the moment that's why yeah. we keep on seeing Dominari is on the castle of um, DS Cartel from time to time yeah and I think they're preparing, some, uh, preparing themselves out for some uh, you know the the future competitions that uh, you might be seeing here in ROGGH future. I'm not sure what they are Future. But, you know, we might see mm. some, uh, Hot some future competitions here um, here in uh, ROGGH as well. As uh, we are just uh, trying to scale where the others are. <laughs> and uh, yep. we are seeing uh, guilds like Fratres. Seraphim. Seraphim actually just taking a castle. Fratris uh, finally um, starting to attack different castles right now. Aftershock and Power of Friendship is here again. So, if you yeah. are lost, you know, you can win every time with the Power of Friendship. <laughs> I think it's... Oh, uh, yeah. Far... <laughs> yeah. Actually, you saw yeah, that earlier. Power of yeah, Friendship. Sorry. And I think this castle is owned by Nemesis Armada. I might. Yep. If I'm if I'm right right there. Oh, uh, yeah. And this is owned by Nemesis Armada. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I think we can works. actually also... Yeah, Steel Wolves, you can also check um, Scarlet Palace right there. Maybe we will see a few more people. Mm-hmm. Uh, because like what we've seen in the last few sessions, um, Scarlet Palace has been a hot castle. Since, um, you know, you can get a lot of things, a lot of good things here, especially that Emblem of the Sun God. Or maybe they are back in the Cremfield Castle just... You know, battling it out in the GVG scenario or back in Hohenshuang Go oh, uh, for uh, Dominari and DS Cartel. Ooh, vanishing point connecting. Mm. Wow. Oh, yeah, my. And, uh, he actually yeah. killed three Dominari. Yeah, uh, because uh, a Royal Guard is, is really hard to deal with, uh, especially if, you, if that Royal Guard okay. is really well geared. That's... And, uh, you know, Ooh. look at the vanishing point coming from uh, this point. Oh, oh, oh. Pinpoint attack! <laughs> so, he killed, like, oh. five Dominari! Yeah, and uh, I think they can't do much against this. Oh, does he have that Storm Knight card? I think so. Oh, he's, he's casting a Storm Gust. He's, he's automatically casting that Storm Gust, though. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's interesting right Somebody there. Somebody needs to this person. <laughs> Ooh, that's interesting right there. Uh, what we see. Or maybe there's just an uh, equipment that we're not really familiar yeah. of. But uh, I believe the only one that you can actually cast that storm gust. Okay, you have another vanishing point coming from okay. that royal guard. I think that's, uh, that, that guild is sword. The yeah, ranger is going to try and uh, run away right here. The ranger can't do much because you know that that royal guard is also quick into attacking, and he got just okay, got so frozen we have to right there. Now. He just Vanishing got frozen. Arrow storm, storm, storm no? coming from this dominari, and oh! uh, look at the point once again. This oh! royal guard is oh! really doing it. <laughs> Another one going down. Okay, okay. So I want to see this. Roll. Guard versus That's Royal RG Guard. versus RG right Let's here. Go. Let's go. Attack. Okay. Oh, oh, another one oh goes my. down. This, this this Royal Guard is really crushing it. He wants to really break this Imperium all by himself, though. Oh my. I think we have the answer oh, now uh, versus uh-huh. Dominari. <laughs> you, you need they to just get need to guy. get this, uh, this player, <laughs> Van Dark. get a guy. <laughs> oh, Van Dark. Oh my. All right. Anyway. Uh it says your third job and no e call. You know we you know e call might be implemented in the future. We don't know. Yeah. We don't really know. Uh but uh for the current War of Imperium sessions there is no emergency call. Um and in my opinion it's a little bit better uh for now, if you don't have that emergency call, to actually see the you know the strategy of players. And how they are, uh, you know, just regrouping outside of the castles yeah. and everything. Uh, because if we have that emergency wow. call, only that guild leader will go in and maybe cast an emergency call and, uh, you know, get all of their members in. And yes. right now, we are seeing Dominari 
regroup and look at their numbers right now. Yes, and it's um, really it's really a sight to uh That's a good see. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of uh, equal, um yes, there's actually a good side and bad side on that one. But I think having no equal, it actually brings a different approach on the strategies on our current meta, right? And um, I think for the meantime, having no equal is is good. Having those uh, one attempt only for front fights or 1v1 fights is good also. It prevents uh, the players to have those, um, you know, multiple... I mean, you need to be on top of your game every time that you're going to face a one kill, basically. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot relax if you're going to fight uh, Dominari. You cannot relax if you're going to fight Yes Cartel, Arsenal, or any other guild, mm -hmm. right? That's actually one of the best things about having no equal. Having yeah. an equal, it's more on the objective type of uh, War of Imperium. Because mostly the equals is used to uh, reposition your guild into a certain area to cap the Imperium. Versus um, having no equal, having a head-on fight um, to make a uh, maybe a to make a room for your guild to move to another floor or another portal. So I think uh, yeah. it has uh, an advantage and disadvantage as well. But having for the meantime no equal, I think it's good because you need to be serious on every game that you're gonna have. And I think I like that, you know. Yeah, and we can see, actually see the strategies of the players into entering the castles and uh, going out. Uh, because if he has an emergency call, most of them won't be coming in. Maybe they might be in different castles. Yeah. Then at the last minute, they're going to use that emergency call to capture a different castle yeah. as well. And, you know, seeing them actually work here um, in every War of Imperium session, you know, just see them regrouping, it's a sight to behold. And yes. it's really fun to see a lot of these players just going in and out of every castle. But, you know, everything will change if we have that emergency call up. Of course, like what uh, MG mentioned, it's going to be a little bit more on the objective type of things. Uh, you can be a little bit more strategic if you have that emergency call. For yeah. example, if your, whole, um, if your whole guild got wiped out from the offense, maybe you could set up another offensive strategy or maybe a, a, another offensive attack really, really, really quickly by uh, using that emergency call. So uh, yeah, it has good sides and bad sides as Dominari will be able to battle each other out here and uh, just they just went in for that GVG action here in this castle and uh, yeah, Do Red Dominari won that battle and uh, probably because they have a lot more numbers than their purple guild. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think Red Dominary will give you two options. Either you put mm -hmm. a land protector or you put Numa. If you're gonna put Numa, Warlocks is gonna punish you with those uh, heavy um, AoE damage. But if you're gonna mm -hmm. put land protector, the Rune Knights will actually kill you. Yeah. So, um, it's... I think one other option that they can do is to prevent that mechanic from going in. Yeah. Either by using traps or by using manholes. Or uh, uh, vacuums. Vacuums from warlocks. Or uh, vacuums, uh, yeah. I mean, vacuums from sorcerers as well. Yeah, because it's really hard to deal with uh, Dominaria's uh, mechanic. Like, uh, what we've seen from them in the last few sessions, uh, they've been utilizing that mechanic really, really well using that suicidal destruction. Yes. And uh, if I remembered correctly, um, another guild, I think that was Adonis, used that against the S Cartel Curse when they were defending Padre yeah. Castle. Yeah, they were they used that uh, Cursed Circle, then uh, casted that Suicidal Destruction to wipe that whole uh, party of uh, the S Cartel. Yes, and I think um, they need to be careful on the mechanic because I think one mechanic can actually destroy uh, an entire guild or at least uh, multiple cells on one stack. So having this mechanic is really, I don't know, deadly, right? Yes. So if the dragon spread is not working, if the warlocks is not perfectly landing those AOEs, uh, they have the mechanic for mm -hmm. the third option. So yes. it's really hard to fight Dominari. So it's pretty understandable. Uh, Ties Cartel currently is, you know, having a hard time. Um, 
to think that Dominari has multiple numbers as well. And Dom DS Cartel has like maybe 20 plus ish mm -hmm. earlier. So yeah, it's really hard to fight uh, Dominari right now. Yeah. And uh, I have a question, MG. Mm. Since uh, we've already watched a lot of um, Warrior of Imperium sessions until uh, up to date, um, you know, I wanna I want to ask you, seeing all these classes, which classes, which class would you prefer to play in Warrior of Imperium? Um, to be fair, um, I want to play a, a utility class, so I would choose um, either Archbishop or Sorcerer. Because again, uh, sorcerer and archbishop, I believe most of, of uh, most of them is uh, setting. Uh, they're the ones trying to set the tempo in every fight. For example, for sorcery, they have this land protector. If there's no land protector, again, the guild will be punished uh, immediately by mass POEs, right? And having those vacuums in front of your guild will prevent the enemies to, uh, you know, to. Prevent the Suras, for example, to do a bad relo because they're gonna be captured on those vacuums. And uh, same goes with mechanics. So having a decent uh, utility will actually turn things uh, around for your guild. So yeah, I would really love to play a uh, sorcerer. And for Archbishop, you have the safety walls, you have the Numas, you have the buff, you have the Lex. So you can actually uh, play around, you know. You can actually support players to uh, to stay alive. You can actually support the players to kill certain uh, objective classes mm. that you're facing against. So yeah, those two classes would be really perfect for me, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we can actually take a look at Fadigrid Castle right now in uh, Middle Pantera. Um, the Escarto just captured that castle, so... Uh, earlier, we actually saw <coughs> Arsenal, uh, Goons, and Purple Dominari there. So, they might be there right now and actually battling each other out. Uh, so, what we see right here, uh, Dominari uh, wants to push in. DS Cartel just trying to defend. Uh, actually, only just just only saw one member of DS Cartel, that Shadow Chaser. But, uh, you know, Dominari is getting ready to regroup. They are going to push in. Okay. No? Not yet. Oh, okay, I think okay. this Some is a, this is a bad spot for uh, DS Cartel. And having that uh, bad spot for DS Cartel, uh, they need to fall back immediately inside. Because uh, that choke area or that portal defense is is very open. Yeah, you have two ways. You have the left and right side to uh, move just in case uh, they're going to put uh, some pros there or put massive AoEs. You can actually move on the left and right. So I think that's a bad spot coming mm -hmm. from DS Cartel. So, they need to move in or regroup back at the uh, preamp, maybe, to force the choke fights on uh, Dominari. And I think, yeah. uh, like we mentioned earlier, this is a perfect spot they, that they need to go in. It's just they need to have those multiple AOEs to be dropped on that portal, having those multiple vacuums, and they need to remove that uh, land protector. They need to remove this. No, they, they might be actually using that, uh, utilizing that land protector into their advantage because. Uh, they want to do those uh, uh, AOE long range AOE attacks, so might they might be using that to the advantage, their advantage right there. But as you can see right here, Arrow Storms and Dragon's Breath coming from DS Cartel, uh, trying to defend uh, their own castle right here. In fact, that's that land protector has just been casted to prevent maybe to prevent that Numa from going yep. in. But that, that, okay. that was actually on the side of Dominari, they are losing numbers right now. Their mechanic actually They're going at that guillotine fist actually attacking that royal guard but he's still alive maybe that auto guard just popped up at the right time right there as dominari quick into the grouping right here they are not lost just yet they still have members on the ground right now here in this imperium castle defending our getting casted right here and look at this mechanic just trying to go in oh, if the mechanic go. is able to go he's going in near no one actually got no, no, hit no, no, right no. here no one got hit no one got hit he so doesn't maybe, have the black he's there uh, yeah, yeah maybe there was a mandragora howling that i didn't actually see but Dominari is still there in the battle. DS Cartel just trying to hold. I think Dominari is just holding their um, their flag warp right there so that yep. um, you know DS Cartel won't be able to go in really that quickly. And that's what we are seeing right Good here. Sustain. DS Cartel 
uh, really defended this castle well in um, Fat Grid. Yep. But this Royal Guard is still alive. They need that high Let's uh, go! penetrating damage against that Royal Guard to actually deal with him. But that Numa got casted. That Sura is still alive. And Dominari okay, is not push. yet done. They want to keep the pressure on Dragon Spell coming from both sides. Psychic Wave coming. The Sorcerer and Arrow Storms coming from DS Cartel right here. And look at that Numa to actually prevent those long range attacks from going in. Wow. And uh, DS Cartel just trying to hold this castle with uh, the, those few numbers. This Sorcerer they have is left. keep on dispelling everyone. Mm -hmm. WG and look at the pressure. The you pressure just... coming from Dominari though, MG. Wow! They tried to uh, Zerg Rusher, they tried to uh, swarm in, but again, DS Cartel is very ready. And I think they have, they didn't anticipate that the uh, players coming from the uh, from the flag war, hitting the back lane, trying to reduce the amount of players that's going in. So well played coming from uh, DS Cartel. Wow! Yeah, and uh, actually, like what you mentioned earlier, MG, you know, this spot is really the best spot to yes. defend yes. this castle. Here in the Imperium, uh, Emp Room, yep. uh, you know, if you defend this spot, of course, you need to deal with a lot of waves. Because it's like a tower tower defense right Yes, here. exactly. Yeah. Or uh, like, no, it's a castle defense. Of course, you need to deal with a lot of people. Of course, this cartel has that defense set up. They don't have... Um, what you call this guilting cross or rolling cutters there yep. on the side but they have that royal guard to actually deal that over uh, to deal damage with that overbrand and they have that sura that is um, that is being um, sacrificed yes <laughs> how can it say it that's a, a, a sacrifice casted on him to prevent the damage uh, getting taken from the right side by that sura so he can cast that curse circle perfectly uh, but right now, Dominari is going to the group, and uh, the pressure coming from Dominari, uh, they didn't let out, or they didn't give up really, really quickly. They yes. went in, uh, you know, they went in at the right time, at the right moment, but DS Cartel really has that defense set up, and um, Dominari just keeps on putting the pressure uh, on a DS Cartel right there. If DS Cartel didn't actually take out the members that I think are waiting outside mm -hmm. of this uh, Emp Room, That's gonna be uh, they problem. might not be able to yeah. defend this castle. But if, I think if Red Dominari pushes this castle, this this castle will be done. This will yes. go to Dominari immediately. Yes, and what I like about this area or this uh, choke area is they're forcing the uh, mechanics to run to the stack, which is... Um, you know, it's gonna be uh, the mechanics are gonna be very visible to take down on this one, and I think this is gonna be round three coming Ooh. from Dominari. Dominari right now is trying to rush in, but again, DS Cartel is very composed on this one. Multiple Dragon Breath connecting to Dominari. Dominari is trying to sustain the damage coming from DS Cartel. Psychic Wave has been casted, massive dispel, Diamond Dust, Dragon Breath connecting on the uh, portal, and I think Dominari is actually uh, done for this uh for this wave mm -hmm. actually you know they are losing members left and right right yep. um right there uh because you know i think uh, the main factor is that sura that's just beside that portal they didn't uh, yeah. notice it they didn't notice it and they just they just left him alone because they want to go in <laughs> really really quickly they just left him alone and the when a oh. lot of members of Dominari went in. Oh, Dragon Breath! He just used that Curse Circle to prevent others from actually dealing damage against him. But that Dragon's Breath dealing damage against uh, Dominari right here. And, you know, he will just <coughs> retreat and go back with his friends uh, here in that M2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, you cannot but, afford those kinds of mistake games. Again, you're uh, you're facing with uh, Dominari. We're talking about three guilds here. Having those uh, errors coming from this cartel that could actually affect their lineup inside. Yeah, and uh, what's different or what's the um, difficult here for DS cartel if they lose um, or if they lose one of their members or if they get um, attacked or yeah. uh, if they die in the M room, they need to be able to go in to the M room again. But the flag warp is here at the pre-M. It's and it's kind of in the right side, 
So I think someone is defending that warp as well. So you know, Dominari is really defending oh this. Oh my! Uh, this is gonna be a big this wave. This point really, really well. So they, if they are defending this, you know, they, uh, the DS Cartel will have a hard time to defend if they lose a lot more members. Yes. But look at the wave. Yeah, I, I agree with you. This is going to be a huge wave for Dominari. Uh, so they are preparing to go in, and I see uh, maybe five or six mechanics in their um, lineup right now. So if uh, those mechanics will be able to go in and, uh, you know, be beside those uh, members of the Escartel, it's going to be all over for the Escartel yeah. right there. But I think they are getting ready for that push. And I think this is going to be the red one. Redwood will take uh, a head-on match versus uh, the Escartel. And um, they should be aware that um, they're going to face a mechanics strategy again. They need to force those mechanics to run on the third or in the second layer of this um, imp room. Mm -hmm. They need to force that um, long walk coming from those mechanics. Yeah. So let's see and... Uh, oh, they are going go. in. And, uh, and from what I saw actually, you know, that Sorcerer was the first one who went in and no AOE damage coming from the Escartel right there. Compared to the wave, uh, the, the, the wave or on how they dealt with the first or and second wave of Dominari, that third wave, the third wave is really, you know, kind of dull. Yeah. Because they didn't actually cast a lot of skills to deal with Dominari right there. They didn't cast a lot of Dragon's Breath, or they did. I didn't see a lot of arrow storms with Dragon's Breath landing at the stack of um, Dominari. Yeah. So me, that's why I think they weren't able to defend this castle because you know they weren't able to do that much damage. Maybe they lost a lot of members when they defended in the first and second wave earlier. Yes. Um. What I suggest, the or my opinion on the first and second wave, um, on the first and second wave, they should have at least like one or two or uh, two knights putting uh, pressure on the side of the back lane. It doesn't matter if they have damage or what, but having that um small pressure. On the back lane can actually create something or create an opening or create an adjustment on the side of uh, the S cartel and once uh, the S cartel managed to make an adjustment maybe that's gonna be an open window for Dominari to take uh, the front lines or the footies on the first ground and take the fight on the second um, second layer of this um, Imperium uh, room yes and so, we have yeah. a question here where is last sniper we're not really sure where last sniper is we're not really sure. Uh, maybe we could ask some of their members, uh, but we're not really sure where they are. Maybe they're hiding somewhere or they're just not really online right now, maybe for this session. But, you know, um, we've seen them the last few sessions. Last Nightmare has been experienced. It's really something. I think they have two guilds as well. And they've been battling it out with Dominari. I think they, they're the only ones who can actually compete with Dominari yes. in terms of manpower. Okay. All right. And uh, while that battle is uh, done, I want to mention another event that we have here in ROGGH. It's the Help King Pouring. So King Pouring needs your help. Speak to him in Frontera to find out what he needs. You will be sent on a daily mission to hunt golden pourings. Make sure you collect its drops. Trade in the items dropped in exchange for consumables or a costume pouring bag. Event period is extended until August 18, 2022. Again, for more information about this event, you can visit our website, ro.gnjoy.asia.com or join the ROGGH Discord. Links can be found in the pinned comment of this stream, so make sure to check it out. Yep. Alright. Okay, so what we have right now is Opus Day. Oh, a new oh, emblem. They have though. numbers. Wow. New emblem for Opus Day. And uh, I think they are evenly matched against maybe Fratres goons. in terms of numbers. Fratres, Goons, or uh, maybe Podonis, goons. Yeah. yeah. I think Goons uh, have more manpower than Opus Day. Uh, maybe Adonis, Adonis though. Adonis. Adonis. They can be evenly matched against Adonis. Uh, and I saw another guild earlier. I forgot which guild it is. Uh, I think that was Chow. I think Chow, Chow has around maybe uh, nine members oh, that's online good. right now. Yeah. Uh, maybe Fratres also has decent numbers right now that they can actually deal with. Obviously, they here in Hongyo Shuanggo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I think uh, still Moose is very consistent on capping uh, castles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I'm curious on where nonsense is. Because they've been ba avoiding battles, uh, GVG battles since the start. They were, they're always opting for that uh, portal mm. defense. Which I understand because they are, you know, lacking in numbers compared to the bigger guilds. And that is the best option for them to defend uh, their castle is to actually set up a portal defense. Mm -hmm. And always for nonsense, they have, um, I think, two Rokis Vale or uh, two um, classical clocks um, ready in every portal defense. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. to be fair, on the side of Dungeons, I understand the strategy that they're trying to do. Maybe they're just still uh, gathering, um, what do you call this, materials or mm -hmm. the rewards from the uh, mm -hmm. castles. And at the same time, mm -hmm. I think they just want to have those uh, medium fight guilds. Uh, medium fight mm -hmm. uh, in mediums, medium sized guilds as well. Mm -hmm. Again, um, having a, a big fight versus Dominar is kind of stressful as well. You know, you should yeah. understand, or you should uh, weigh in, of course, the uh, the status of your members. Again, yeah. having multiple battles on big girls is kind of stressful, and sometimes it can actually uh, ruin the morale on on your guild mate, especially on War of Imperium, right? So yeah. it's very reasonable if I'm on the on, if I'm on nonsense as well. I would I would do the same thing. I would save the uh, my members. I would really uh, push for those quick farm or rewards for the castles. And once I gather more members, that's the time we can uh, take Dominari, for example, or yes, Cardan. So it's perfectly understandable uh, what they're trying to do right now. Yeah, but I think you know nonsense has a decent core setup. Uh, mm -hmm. They have you know the right amount of or the the right class. For every situation for for nonsense um as always they have again that classical pluck in the portal yeah they have that arc bishop to deal damage or to help out um their their guild yeah. and uh, i believe they have three or four guillotine cross to use that rolling cutter for that portal defense um every now and then if they don't have that classical pluck but uh, aside from that, they have a lot of damage dealers like Warlocks and Sorcerers. Yes. And uh, uh, they have maybe um, a tanky Rune Knight. I think they have a tanky Rune Knight right there. Yes, just yes. dealing damage um, against uh, their opponents by doing a portal defense. Yes. But right now, we are going to follow Adonis. And, yes. uh, and uh, a group here. Yep, I think they're going to push here. Here in uh, Fat Grid Castle. And I agree with you uh, with that one, James. Again, um, they have a decent lineup. But again, we're talking about multiple waves of enemies, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think if there's an e-call, maybe. Maybe if there's an e-call, I think uh, that numbers can actually do something against um, a three-man guild, a three -man guild mm -hmm. right? But yeah, at the but... moment... Yeah. Yes. So... Yeah, yeah but again, I think uh, MG... Um, you know, if we have that emergency call, smaller guilds really won't stand the chance against larger guilds. Again, because if they can penetrate the portal defense, uh, you know, if that guild leader, uh, usually it's a Sura, Sura just yeah. <laughs> uh, body relocks all the way to the yeah. back and cast that emergency call, you, you will get pummeled and you will get squished easily and your, cap your castle will be captured. Yes. And again, it's going to be a hard uh, task to do on the side of the guild leader. Because again, you're holding the command, you're holding also the uh, e-call. So most of the time, uh, the pressure is on your uh, shoulder most of the time, right? So yeah, I think it's going to be a hard um, hard fight or hard strat if they're going to have, or if they're going to have uh, the e-call as well. Because you need to consider the cooldowns of the skills of your teammates as well cooldowns of your equal plus the perfect time went to equal as well so yes. there's a lot of consideration to take in so yes. yeah <laughs> and uh from what i know i think every other guild skill is available i think you can use them um uh, all the emergency call is dis disabled so i think you can use every other guild skill available out there 
Um, and uh, speaking of, you know, uh, guild skills right there, um, you know, seeing uh, every War of Imperium session, MG, mm. I gotta ask you, what is your favorite skill to see being utilized here in War of Imperium? Yeah. yeah, that's actually a tough one. Well, um, for me, I think uh, one of the skills that they need to utilize is for me for defending is the spell. Mm-hmm. I'm oh, I'm actually seeing like few players who've been uh, spamming the spell because again, this spell can actually play a huge role on on defending. Why? Mm-hmm. Because every time that uh, somebody goes into the portal, right? Most of them are full buff. They have multiple uh, um, buff to have a counter on certain skills, right? Mm-hmm. So if you can actually dispel them, you're limiting their options to. Uh, you're limiting the options on what they can do, right? For example, they have um, a massive buff on their HP or massive buff on the damage. If you manage to dis- uh, dispel that, it will give you or, or your guild will have a bit of room to move around or try to play with their with their opponents mm-hmm. so the spell yes I think the spell is what one of the things they need to utilize especially mm-hmm. for defending I'm talking about defending only on portals so yeah I think mm-hmm. that's my answer and how about you James adjusting I mean what skill are you you know yeah actually I agree with you there that the spell is really really crucial um, especially in tough situations where you really need, really need to take out the buff of your opponents. Like, if you have a, if you're concentrating on a long range damage, a uh, long range attack, maybe you can dispel that defending <coughs> arrow of the royal guard just uh, yeah. using that sacrifice on your team or on your opponents. Uh, but you know what I like to see here in uh, get utilized more in. War of Imperium. Mm. Um, and uh, we've been seeing that um, getting casted. And uh, we just don't notice it every time. It's that Mandragora's howling. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it can really, really cause a lot of mayhem for your opponents in a wide range. I agree. And again, really cause mayhem because the casting time will be really boosted to the roof. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, if you, if you use that, actually... Um, Get, getting that, uh, utilizing that skill is really perfect in every situation because, um, you know, almost all of the skills, even with that um, poem of or that magic screen mm-hmm. strings, uh, the casting time will still be um, will be increasing much. You, you, yeah, you, the casting time will still increase, and the, therefore uh, eliminate um, more damage coming to your guild. So I think that's the best support skill. I think that's the best skill that, uh, or the my favorite skill to see in every situation. Yeah, and I'm not sure about the cooldown of that skill, but definitely I'm gonna research that. Um, the Monte Carlo Howling. But again, yes, that's a uh, very effective, both on offense and defense as well. Um, mm-hmm. they should capitalize that as well, and yeah, that can that can actually um, turn things over. For certain yeah. fights. Yeah, and uh, we have a comment right here. A lot of people are looking for Last Nightmare. And uh, it says here in the comment, To all my fans, we are sorry. I am sick. That's why we are not participating in oh. War Imperium. Dash Last Nightmare. I don't know if it's legit, but if uh, someone is sick in your guild, that's why you're not participating. You know, I think prioritizing your health is the better option here. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine if you don't participate if you are in various sessions. But yes, uh, I think you're getting better. Better is the priority. Uh, I think that's uh, that's uh, the priority for most people. Yep. Uh, and I think that's, you know, uh, it's good to rest. Yes, and at the same time, James. Uh, I mean, if if that's your guild leader or shot caller, definitely, you know, you're just mm-hmm. gonna maybe take advantage of the fifty percent um XP boost for the meantime, right? So yeah. yeah. Mm. So you want to uh, yeah, be chill. You want to be chill in every situation. So, uh, yeah, you can take advantage. You can reroll. Maybe try to level up your characters while uh, having a bit of rest if it's the weekend and you have no work. Maybe. And I think, yeah, if you want to have a rest, yeah, I think it's fine. 
Definitely. Especially if someone is sick, maybe, you know, prioritizing health is the best option. Yeah. Okay. But, so... You know, some people really um, uh, kind of like me sometimes. <laughs> Even if I'm sick, if I, if I want to play, I'm going to play. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's go right. back to the ball game. And right uh -huh. now, we have Dominary. Inside of this portal is DS Cartel. We're gonna see a face-off um, versus Purple Dominari and DS Cartel. And let's see if um, Purple Dominari can uh, do a, um, you know, a good push versus DS Cartel. Because we saw Red um, Dominari wiping DS Cartel in every defense that they had on Castle uh, or Imperial area. Defense. Yes, and, I, yeah. and I'm looking forward to see how Dominari will push the defense of DS Carter right here. Uh, Red Dominari isn't present at the moment, so only Purple Dominari will uh, try to deal with um, DS Cartel. Or maybe someone is holding that flag warp of DS Carter right here. That's why, uh, you know, some of their members of the Red Dominari might be there. <laughs> because again, they have uh, dominating numbers. Yes. And uh, only a shadow, shadow Chaser went in, maybe to scout. And uh, Dominari actually wants to push in right now. They are going to try and deal some damage to the Escarter right here. As what we see, that land protector got casted. Dominari trying to push in. We have that okay. Scorcer just casting the spell at Diamond the back, dust. getting eliminated by that Dragon's Breath. And uh, look wow. at that uh, Dominari members just holding in, taking the damage coming from DS Carter right here. I saw Mandragora Howl got casted here on the they side of DS Cartel. While Dominari is going to have a hard oh. time pushing in, they cannot cast any skill perfectly. And look at the casting time coming from uh, from uh, Dominari right there because of that Mandragora Howling. Yeah, and, and uh, to connect that a nice order. defense. Nice defense coming from from DS Carter right there, and that lamp protector almost caught. Uh, you know, almost cost DS Carter a lot of mishaps. <laughs> yes, and as you can see, um, I, I didn't know if you noticed the sudden change of of um, the strategy on the side of DS Cartel. They just um try to eliminate the numas on the on the floor by putting uh, multiple land protectors on the side of um, of dominari preventing them to put um numas and i think uh, that capitalized the uh, dragon spread on the side of yes cartel towards uh, dominari and that's what i'm talking about earlier i think dominari purple needs to be uh, needs to put a bit of pressure there's a bit of opening on the portal side they should, um, I think some of the players should have stayed there and cast a long range, um, maybe Ooh. a Dragon Spread or Storm Gust just to delay a couple of players on the side of uh, the Cartel. But apparently, they just went in and yeah, but apparently, that didn't work on the side of uh, Dominari. Yes, and uh, Dominari is regrouping right now to go for that second wave against the Cartel. And uh, you know, MG. Um, a while ago, I came across um, a question coming from one of uh, an RO an RO player. Why they don't actually stack up in third job battles? Yeah. Um, you know, if you are used to the old meta like the classic or transcendent meta, like everyone stacking up um, just to deal damage or for that uh, guild versus guild situation, uh, you know. In third job, it's different because you will get get wiped out really, really quickly because there are skills like the suicidal destruction, uh, yep. that curse circle. You can dis you will get disabled very, very quickly if you are all stacked up. Um, you will get damaged a lot by Dragon's Breath, those arrow storms. A lot of AOE skills will deal, deal damage to you, especially if you get hit by sorcery skills as well. Yes, I agree. Um, there's actually so, certain scenarios yeah. as well that uh, stacking is good, but most of the time stacking is not, you know. No, it's uh, not, not really ideal for third job. Yeah, though. I agree, James. Yeah, it's not really ideal for third job. That's why, uh, you know, stacking up isn't really an option in every situation here in a in a in a third job Warframe Imperium session because 
again a lot of skills will get utilized and you will get wiped out really really quickly that's why uh, um you know those skills that we are seeing right now that are used to third job fights mm -hmm. um we're seeing them not, um you know, spread out in every battle because they don't want to get wiped out uh they are quick on their feet or how can i say their fingers because yes. they can quick really really quickly right there and move out really really quickly if they needed to do so and uh prevent uh, other mishaps from happening for their guild yes that's actually true and um i think uh this cartel is gonna dominate the purple holding, though. yeah i think they're just gonna dominate um what do you call this uh dominari purple and dominari yeah. purple is gonna be i'm not sure if they're gonna call the red one but if they're just gonna push and use the same strategy yeah, i think they're not gonna be successful on that push mm -hmm. and maybe we can try and take a look at a different spot now mm -hmm. mg uh i think if they are going to call out the the red dominari to deal with uh the escarta right here it's going to be dangerous for DS Cartel because, like what I said earlier, the numbers of Dominari is no joke. Yep. If the purple one attacked and they almost got caught, or if, it, if they almost went down uh, from the, the purple Dominari, you know, that red one will cause massive mayhem to their guild because they have a lot more numbers. And uh, I think that is their main guild. That's why the most of their damage comes from the red Dominari guild. Yes, and speaking of numbers as well, they, they're gonna deal with cooldowns as well. Mm -hmm. So if the fight is gonna last like for like two minutes, I think uh, supply wise and cooldown wise, I think they're gonna have a hard time as well. They need to refresh those yes. um, important skills because some skills are it's gonna be cooldown for like um, one minute or maybe yeah. thirty seconds, and having a con um a consistent or constant push. From Dominari, that's gonna be a huge problem. They need to have like big numbers, or they need to have, uh, or they need to sync the skills that they're throwing on that portal. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, you know, speaking of uh, everything that's happening right now, uh, while uh, we are searching for guilds to look at, I do want to mention that the Shadow Egg. Oh. is still available and uh, this is now your chance to grab hold of all the latest items in game and uh if you have big luck maybe you know opening a shadow egg isn't going to be so bad for you yes uh but for me and mg no we're nah. a bit uh, i didn't want to talk about it anymore uh because uh if, if i if i may say so the last conquest that lucky draw <laughs> so unlucky we're so unlucky in that lucky draw from that ROG from ROG GH. Yeah, I'm actually holding yeah, like four tickets draw. already and um, <laughs> four tickets. Yeah, and, and, and still we, no we luck. missed one number. We just missed one number. And yeah. because of that, I know don't have luck. That, that but hurts then a lot. again, you guys might be so lucky uh that you, if you if you draw if you open one egg, you'll get the best item you can Maybe get. Maybe if you can so. open now. Like right now, maybe you can uh, get uh, a good one. So. Yeah, and if you open now, if you recharge and you open now, actually, we do have uh, the Razor Gold July event still up and going oh, no. because from July 1 to Ju July, July 12, sorry, 31, 2022, 11.59 p.m. GMT plus 8, you can recharge your G-Enjoy account via Razor Gold Wallet and get some in-game items such as Mystic Powders, Three Tears Blessing, Unlimited Flywing Box, Battle Manual, Job Manual, and Analyze Eye Lower for free. Yeah. <laughs> Player, players will receive 5% bonus Razor Gold with a minimum recharge while the stocks last. There's also a Top Spender promotion. And uh, we've seen these things in person. The Top Spender will receive a Razor Huntsman, V2 Clicky Optical Switch. Yes. Second and third third top spender will receive a black shark v2 and the fourth to tenth top spender will receive a ten dollar razor gold voucher if you want to know more information about this promotion you can visit the website 
ro.gmjoy.asia.com or join the ROGGH Discord. Yeah. Links can be found, of course, in the pinned comment of the stream, so please do check it out. There you go. I'm actually using a Blackshirt version too, and it's really Ooh. nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, you're, you're just you're, you're just flexing, right? Yeah, I'm just promoting it. So <laughs> uh, you, you guys need to top up. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, it, I it, actually saw magical. one. Uh, they're actually requesting for a seven v seven. Um, in in the shout current uh, earlier, they've been spamming the seven v seven. I'm not sure who's that guild, and what mm -hmm. guild they're trying to uh challenge. Ooh. Yeah, I think you know having a seven versus seven in third job is not really that bad. <laughs> because yep. you can utilize uh, different strategies. Of <laughs> course, there are different classes that you can use. Um, because if you are used to seeing the classic and uh, <laughs> transcendent meta in the 7 versus 7 or 9 versus 9 situation, um, you know, third job hits different because you yep. can utilize a lot more skills. You can uh, have more combos for your classes. And it's actually much faster compared to the it's, old uh, Yeah, one. it's much yeah. more fast-paced. And you need to be, you need to be strategic. Yes. And uh, skillful, M much more skillful than um, the 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 second or the transcendent yeah, yeah. and um, the, the classic the, the, meta. the classic one. Yeah. Because again, yeah. Um, we're talking about multiple skills that can actually be used compared to the classic one. It, like it's it's a very straightforward uh, meta. Right? Mm -hmm. If you're just gonna be an alchemist, you're just gonna throw acid demos and that's it. But here in uh, third class, um, you have a lot of options, to be honest. Okay, yeah. and here we go. Yeah, uh, you do have a lot of options, again, because you can get hit by a lot of skills. You can have that ranger for that arrow storm build. You can have that runite because you can actually cause uh, massive mayhem for that dragon spell. Yes. Or you can have that mechanic, or maybe if, maybe if you can get that suicide of destruction in. <clears throat> so you know, it really depends on uh, the meta and how how you play in ROGGH, yes. of course, and how the ROGGH will uh, play it out. And uh, you know, it it will really depend on the players as well, <clears throat> because I think having a seven versus seven in third job is going to be fun. Exactly. Honestly, that that's my opinion in having a seven versus seven. If, if we're not going to have seven versus seven, maybe a twelve versus twelve. Of course, we have only a maximum uh, party number of uh, twelve players, uh, or maybe a nine versus nine, ten versus ten. Well, probably, you know, how much many numbers we need in order to get a decent match getting uh, going on. Exactly. In a third job situation. Yeah, I actually saw a couple of um, challenges from multiple guilds that they want to have mm -hmm. that. Um, kind of fight um setup man yeah maybe we can have that in the, in the future maybe yeah but yeah during... <laughs> I, I i probably think i, I probably think um you know uh, roggh is uh stirring some things up so yeah you, you, you guys can look forward to that so if you want to um you know be updated and stay up yeah stay up to date to more information about roggh you can uh, like and follow yes, like our and follow. Facebook page and uh, you can join the ROGGH community Discord. You can chat with our mods here and there. Uh, there's also almost a Tofi talk uh, every, every week. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's almost every week, every after maintenance. Or maybe... Oh, yeah, because uh, last Thursday, there was a, a Tofi talk as well. So you can join... Uh, those uh, those things as well and there are a lot of things to see here uh, of course for the ROGGH community so make sure you do join the ROGGH community discord and uh, wow the numbers of ne Nemesis Armada is Ooh, not really okay. a joke I right this match. so this is Nemesis Armada versus Fratres, Fratres yeah. uh -huh. so Fratres actually went in oh that oh they are, oh, oh. are they I think they're the allied. mechanic they're, just oh, went no. in so they're not allied, but you know they just oh, went so in. It's... They just left them alone. That's which side of destruction hitting the back lane. Yeah, and uh, and uh, uh, I'm kind of confused because so that's the, that, that sorcerer just went in. Wow. He, just, he just walked in. That sorcerer of Fratis, he just walked in, and uh, I, I I don't know why they didn't deal damage against um, that sorcerer from Fratis though. Wow. Uh, anyway, you know, Fratres is going to be taking this castle right here. 
I mean, this and, guy, yeah. uh, not you, from Fratres, managed to connect the model on the back lane of uh, Nemesis and yeah, killing and, like uh, seven players. I'm not. I'm not sure if because they're not hitting or they're not casting anything. Oh yeah, there's not much pressure on the side of Nemesis Armada earlier. Like it's like they were just waiting for Fratres to take this castle. I'm not really sure what happened right there because uh, I saw no pressure come from Nemesis, Nemesis Armada right there. It's like they just let Fratres admit them walk in. From what I know, um, you know, uh, in the past few sessions that we've seen them together, yeah, they were kind of allied with each other. Ah, so, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm not really sure if that's the case currently, um, but from what I know, they were allied with each other before, but I'm not really sure now. Oof. All right, and uh, while uh, we are taking a look at different castles right now, we only have 27 minutes left remaining in our current War of Imperium session. I do want to talk about um, the old card album update because oh, yeah. there are 19 new cards in the old card album, including the Ghost Ring card. So a lot of people asked... You know, uh, is Ghost Ring card still viable in uh, a third job or a new world situation? Uh, you know, in my opinion, some skills can uh, be cancelled out. Yeah. Can, uh, some damage of those skills can be cancelled out by the Ghost Ring card. So it's still a valid option. It, it depends on the situation. I think you can use it for switching. Uh, priority. Uh, priorities uh, maybe are more here for War Fairy will still be different. Uh, but you know, going against uh, specific classes, I think having a Ghost String card in your arsenal is really not that bad. Yes, I mean, boss cards are still boss cards, right? So, uh, by by arsenal, I mean not the guild arsenal, but your own personal. Yes. <laughs> because, <laughs> because 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 we're seeing arsenal right here. Yeah. We're seeing arsenal right here. Okay. Yeah, and Arsenal has decent numbers though. They have a lot of numbers. So maybe they can go against probably Nonsense or Dunes or maybe even DS Cartel. They have good numbers. Like, okay, DS Cartel is trying to go in one by one. Uh, let's check outside if they're gonna have an opponent here. Mm hmm. Yes, and uh, while uh, you know Arsenal is defending this Scarlet Palace, I think DS Cartel just scouted. They just scouted here, and they are actually going in to try and do okay. damage against Arsenal. Not really scouting, but they are actually oh, there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're on the are other they the side ones of the defending bitch? this castle. Are they the defenders of the castle? Yes, yes. Oh, so they are the, the 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 owners of the castle. So that's why. They are on the other side of the bridge and they will deal damage to Arsenal and push them out of this castle. And yes. uh, while they are doing so, I do want to mention that we have uh, the Monster Hunter event. I did mention this earlier, right? Monster Hunter, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Monster Hunter event, you can seek out a Midgard Knight in major cities and complete the quests. Collect event token and exchange for exclusive Predator and Marauder equipment set. Event lasts until August 18, 2022. I also do want to mention that we the Islo Dungeon 4 6 is now uh, available, and VP Kraken and Montes are now available. It requires a premium bug to access. For more information about uh, these events, you can visit our website ro.gnjoy.asia.com or join the ROGGH Discord. Score. Yep. And uh, the last of our um, things to say right now, actually, uh, for our new players or for those uh, making new characters uh, here in ROGGH, we have the level up box. Uh, this is a new permanent feature here in ROGGH, wherein upon creating a new character, a new item, a new user box will automati automatically appear in your inventory. <coughs> Opening the box will grant you various consumables and equipment. For every 10 levels achieved until level 90, you can open a new box and receive more items. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great way for our yeah. players to catch up. And of course, if you are 
re-rolling or if you want to maybe create a new character yep. I think the level up box is really a good option okay yeah and uh oh, since I, this uh, yeah, yeah and the same time james i think uh guys don't forget to uh, check the uh, codes from time to time uh, mm -hmm. The codes you can uh, once you uh, input the codes, you can actually get um, battle manuals times three, Japan walls times three as well, um, blessed scroll box, Aji scroll, mystic powders times five, and five tiers of blessing. So make sure yeah. to uh, check the codes from time to time because it's gonna be useful. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be yeah. useful for you and your Plus level. Plus the 50% needs... XP boost uh, ah. till tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, until tomorrow, 10 a.m. And I think this is perfect for. Oh no, no, this is until Monday. Sorry, this Monday, is until Monday. Monday. Yeah, this is until Monday. So you can level up tomorrow since this, this is just Sunday tomorrow. Um, yeah, and you can level up and maybe get, get that few experience in if you're not really max level as of now. And yeah, you can. You can uh, have a better time in leveling since uh, you know 50% EXP boost is better than nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, uh, you know board quests will or the EXP boost will affect the experience you get from board quests as well. No. Mm -hmm. So you know having a percentage or the the 50% EXP boost will um, give you a huge advantage if, uh, even if you're just doing board quests every day. Or if you're just leveling up for maybe an hour every day, just grinding for an hour every day. Definitely. And that will really help. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so I think, James, we only have like um, 21 minutes. So the question yeah, is, yeah. the, is Dominari going to contest uh, this cartel on this one? Or are they going to just sit it out on multiple castles? So that's actually the question that uh, we're going to check. Yeah, uh, in a bit, you know. So, in my honest opinion, MG, I think they are going to contest. Why? Because they're dominating. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I th I think they are going to contest this because the reason why because is because they are dominating. Um, they are not going to let other guilds, you know, take the spotlight, of course, uh, because they want to prove that they are the best in the server currently. And if they take down all the other guilds, you know, capturing all the castles that they need and mm -hmm. they want, um, this will prove that they are really, you know, a, a high tier guild that they cannot be beaten by these guilds unless they team up together. Yes, sir. And speaking of team up, again, if there's going to be a next event, most likely like the same time, uh, last time that we had, uh, if the Escartel is going to team up with multiple guilds i think that's gonna be a deadly on the side of uh or there's gonna be a problem on the mm -hmm. side of dominari again if that's gonna be a pointing system definitely dominari is gonna be split up into two or into three most probably and yes. if that's gonna and if that's gonna happen i think our medium sized skills can take the purple dominari most likely mm -hmm. and the pink one so that's gonna be a big fight or that's gonna be a uh, a good fight then the escartel will take on um dominari red and last nightmare jumping on the scenario as well mm -hmm. um that's gonna be uh that's gonna be chaotic again on yeah. the uh warf imperium event if there's gonna be a, a pointing system event again yeah any kind of i kind of miss seeing last nightmare in battle uh, because again what i mentioned earlier they are the only ones who can actually compete against dominari in terms of numbers and you know without last nightmare here dominari isn't feeling that much pressure mm -hmm. uh because yeah i think they are probably equal in terms of manpower uh, but they do have different strategies um to utilize yeah. and they have different lineups uh, mainly Dominari now focusing on the mechanic uh, suicidal destruction yeah. and uh, they are fo more focused on those uh, probably those what they call this long range attacks yep and uh, for last nightmare I think they are utilizing more on the damage output uh, mostly those uh, AOE skills coming from those sorcerers and warlocks and 
um, from what I remember from last nightmare, they do have a lot of support. They do have a lot of suras to yeah. actually help them out in battle. They have that curse circle strategy as well. Uh, so they do, they do have a lot of support uh, to for their guild. Yes, and I really like the uh, the sorcerer and archbishop of last nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, most of those uh, characters are the one who's trying to set the tempo, or they're Ooh. the one who's setting <laughs> the um, you know the rhythm for the guild. So uh -huh. yeah, definitely one. I hope uh, last night we can actually uh, mm. we can see them on the next session because we're yes. very excited to uh, have or to see the fight between last nightmare and the cartel last yeah. nightmare versus dominari red and last nightmare versus um dominari purple yeah and uh well adonis is actually defending this castle right now um i do want to mention that we saw a lot of members from adonis uh back in conquest and yeah i'm actually asking them to for for uh, <laughs> actually, actually, <laughs> the forbidden I'm dance them to, the forbidden. Uh, to, to, to make a dance to make a dance uh, the last in the next event if we're we're able to I don't know uh, I mean yeah um yeah. if we have the chance to do so yes either. and uh, most of the members of uh, Adonis are I mean all of them are very nice they're very uh mm -hmm. you know up to uh, they're very game on uh, mm -hmm. for example an interview right or for pictures yeah they're very nice mm -hmm. they're very nice I like those guys mm -hmm. yeah and uh, actually we do we did have. A, uh, a streamer, uh, what they call this, streamer <coughs> feature here in ROGGH. Uh, you just got posted, I think, <laughs> yesterday. That's Yarmony's couch. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah we already saw him in, in Conquest as well. So yeah. it was really nice. And uh, his purpose is to actually help out yeah. the new players in ROGGH. So if you do want help, uh, make sure to you know catch his stream from time to time. <coughs> and uh, he's always... You know, ready to help out the new players here in ROGH. Exactly. And he's a nice right. guy as well. Um, I mean, if you have the chance to, you know, have the chance to talk to him, he's a really good, uh, you know, guy to talk to. And at the same time, especially for boosting as well for Archbishop, if you need some tricks and, uh, you know, a skill setup or stat setup, I think he's a, one of the perfect guy to uh, go to when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, Archbishops. Yes. And, uh, Sam actually asked how many can enter the code. Only one can enter the code, apparently. Uh, the first one to enter the code will be able to redeem the rewards from the code. So make sure to enter it first. Yeah, if you if you enter it second or if you're too late into entering that code, um, you know, the fastest you can enter that code, you know, you will be able to re redeem that prize. Yep. And yeah, only the codes are one-time use. There you go. And Diaz Cartel is still defending this castle, I think. I'm not sure if they got pressured uh, right now from Dominari. Because like what I mentioned earlier, it's still Dominari. Dominari <laughs> is Dominari. And they are, of course, always ready Let's go. to turn the tides in every situation. Since we only have 15 minutes remaining. Speaking of Adonis, bro. Uh, Adonis is here. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the dance of these guys. <laughs> yeah, a sync dance. I, uh, yeah, a synchronized <laughs> dance coming from these guys. They're they're a fun bunch. They're a fun bunch. Yeah, and they're uh, they're the one who's. Uh, I mean, Adonis is one of the consistent guilds that we have in the server as well. Uh, they have a very consistent number, and I think their presence in uh, in Warf Imperium is. Uh, it's actually they they have a hundred percent um attendance in Warf Imperium. So mm. I think I didn't miss any Warf Imperium. Or maybe last conquest Warf Imperium, maybe. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, and I actually got to interview the guild leader of uh of Adonis. He said this guild is uh kinda just like casual. So maybe if you wanna join Yo, a ca casual oh. guild that's participating in Warf Imperium, maybe Adonis is the right guild for you. <clears throat> Or maybe if you want to join beer guilds like Dominari or uh, serious competitive guilds like uh, DS Cartel as well, or maybe Arsenal uh, or Fratres, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, Fratres or Ka Goons. Yeah, you know, no, uh, this, you know, there is no wrong decision. 
Yes, exactly. As long as you, you know you're happy with your decision, I think you know just choosing a guild for you to participate in War of Imperium, I think it's the right call. Yes. Because you know War of Imperium is really fun. Exactly. It's actually a, a test of you know of of individual and group skills as well. Mm -hmm. In I mean individual in the sense of landing those crucial skills on 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 those clutch moments mm -hmm. and test of group skills as well because you need to sync your skills to your guild base as well in mm -hmm. order for you to land a perfect combo to the enemy and you can actually punch or kill them right away like what we saw on the last warp imperium with um adonis they managed to land a perfect uh, crystal kill with a five by five cell and a quick mad of destruction coming from their mechanic and that resulted mm -hmm. into a clean wipe versus i think that's gonna be uh the escartel right uh, the one that they uh, took down. Yeah. And like, I'm kind of curious right now, MG, where Dominari is. Um, I, I don't know if they're just settling down right now. Of course, because we only do have um, a little over 11 minutes remaining in their current session. Or, they, or, or if they are going to push out different castles to deal with the, the guilds that are defending. Because I, I do think they have enough time to deal with uh, their opponents since we have um, more, I think, uh, 11 more minutes left. So if yeah. they do want to capture a castle, uh, they do want to regroup, uh, you know, they can regroup and capture different castles as well. But, you know, I think with their numbers, maybe they are Whoa. settling down. Maybe they're just settling down right now. Uh, you can Curse see here the Curse Circle just... Dragon Breath. Stopping uh, the stack here of uh, Opus Day as Arsenal will push in and el eliminate the defenders of this castle. Yeah. Oof. And a very, very crucial few minutes remaining in this War of Imperium session. Let's see who will be able to take, uh, you know, some of these castles home for their guild. As yep. Arsenal is just going to try and push in. Oh, oh Opus still Day. Members Opus Day still remaining. So they actually eliminated Arsenal here in uh, this castle. Yep. And uh, they're going to cast <coughs> Numa. Opus Day just cutting around. Uh, they might have a decent uh, defense set up. Of course, I think uh, these skills are evenly matched. But in terms of uh, manpower, I believe Arsenal has uh, more members than Opus Day right now. I'm not really sure the numbers of Opus Day currently. But it seems like they are uh, more than 15, less than 20, around like that. <laughs> yes. I think it's a match fight uh, between these two girls. Okay, currently uh, Arsenal right now is outside. And of course, they just waiting. We are seeing multiple um, safety walls here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know, Numa got casted. Curse Circle to okay, actually stop Arsenal from doing anything. And they have the trolling cutter. But, you know, the distance uh, for that uh, Curse Circle, you know, that distance is too far for uh, the back lines of Opus Day to do yep. something about the the ones entering the portal. So they need to go closer. So, you know, I think they didn't calculate the range at that time. Yes. So that's why they, they, they had a hard time to defend this castle as Arsenal will be able to push and take this castle down. And yeah, and still that's a good fight coming from those two guilds. Uh, we see the uh, we saw the effort of uh, Opus Day. They tried to uh, try to cap those um, incoming players on the side of Arsenal. They tried to do a uh, curse circle, but apparently the curse circle only connected to one player, and um, most of the rune knights uh, went into the back lane of Opus Day, casted multiple uh, dragon spread there, resulted into a kill on the back lane of Opus Day, and yeah. Uh, they uh, capped the uh, castle. Yes. And uh, like what I, think, what I saw in my feed currently is Kremil Castle actually got captured by Sword. And I think that's that Royal Guard who's really, really tanky and just eliminating <laughs> a lot of members from different guilds. Yeah. Um, I really like the build of that Royal Guard. You can actually... Um, we saw earlier a 1v10 mm -hmm. versus Dominari and his character and he managed to wipe down Dominari's uh, forces who's trying to cap that um, Imperium mm -hmm. uh, right now you know uh, Nemesis Armada <coughs> defending their own uh, castle I think they are taking this castle hostage though since Dominari has this castle 
on their hand and if you take a look at the flag yep so maybe they are just hostaging this castle uh for the last minute of this war from safe yes. session they can capture it and uh, push all of the attackers out yes and um at the same time Jeeps, I, I just want to point two things about the uh, of defending right um what we are seeing right now is a uh, traps coming from the ranger i think um some of the players should utilize the traps as well for me mm -hmm. i think uh, they are very too real reliant on the vacuums mm -hmm. right having those uh, traps from time to time on certain maps can actually help to prevent those um, flankers to go to your back lane. So yeah. I just want to comment Nemesis Armada on this one to uh, on putting multiple traps and maximizing the uh, capability of the ranger. Second that I've noticed on on our War of Imperium, most of the players right now or most of the kills right now is they're not actually capping the Imperium right away. Of course, they want to take yeah. those Imperiums hostage because, yep. uh, you know, it, it will be more advantageous to them in the later or the last few minutes of War Imperium session. Because I think they had that experience uh, before that their castle got taken from them at the last minute. Yeah. So maybe they want to prevent that from happening. And this is what I like about uh, the community of Rano GGH. Um, the, the strategy... I mean, this, their strategy is involving, it's improving from time to time. We're seeing different approach on every War of Imperium. Like for uh, this instance, we didn't see this um, strategy um, last two weeks or last week. But right now, most of the guilds are doing this strategy. They're just trying to hold the castle. And when um, a swarm or when the uh, defending guild comes in, that's the time they're, they're going to break the Imperium and retake and put a solid defense mm -hmm. on the uh, pre-M. So, that's yes. really nice. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like what you mentioned earlier, these skills are really adjusting to every situation. So, if uh, they really did adjust, you know, uh, just hostaging the castle or maybe coming up with different strategies to deal with different opponents, I think, uh, you know, uh, so we are having more War of Imperium sessions. Our guilds, our players are getting better. Um, they are more now, they are much more capable now to coming up with different plans and strategies to deal with opponents. They know how to counter more opponents more. They know how to move better in every situation. So I think, you know, uh, participating in War of Imperium since the very beginning had uh, been a huge help for uh, some of our players. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it boosted their morale, their uh, capabilities as well as a player. Yes, I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, actually, I'm not really sure what happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, actually, I think we can, we can just... Yeah, yeah. I'll turn, just turn things off. Yeah, we can just we can just turn things off. Uh, sorry about that, guys. We have a few technical difficulties here and there, but yeah, we are going to be seeing the few last few minutes of Warm Premium session. We only have four minutes left remaining as guilds are just settling down, defending their own castles, and uh, making sure they they get the, they get the most out of this uh, current session. Yes, I agree. So let's go ahead and uh, check the uh, last part of this. Uh, maybe they're just trying to settle. Yeah, and I think you can just turn off our cameras completely. There you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, but I think you can just turn it off completely, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll take a look at uh, different castles right now. Okay, I'll just put our names there. Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or, or put the black bar, <laughs> black bar or something. I'm sorry about that, guys. A few technical difficulties at the end of our session, but um, yeah, we are just seeing guilds just settle down here um, right now. As goons are defending their own castle, Dominari as well. Um, you know, I'm hoping, hoping to see a lot of more of our guilds, you know, participate in our War of Imperium. Nemesis Armada has a lot of members um, online right now. 
and uh, they they didn't really aim for that GVG action, but more on to, <coughs> more into capturing castles and uh, utilizing you know more of the economy that they can yes. get. Yes. Again, there's no pressure at the moment um regarding the uh, War of Imperium. Again, mm-hmm. if your objective is to uh, um put up more resources on your side, I mean just go and cap castles, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're more on doing the practice of um, guild versus guild, or if you want to test out the execution of your group mates, I think GBG is the answer on that one, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and. And yes, yeah, I, think I think they're, uh, they're just uh, settling right now, most of them. Yeah, and I think we can be back now on the on the screen currently. <laughs> okay, let me just go ahead and yeah. check that. Yeah, I think we can be back now. But yeah, the, you know, guilds there are just settling you go. down. They're there just you go. getting there ready go. Uh, to finish things off. I'm not sure <laughs> if we're going to see some last minute breaks because we've seen that happen before. And, you know, Dominari has always been consistent into breaking things at the last minute. And, you know, uh, they always capture a lot of castles every session. So maybe this time around, they, they, will, be, they, will, they will be able to do that once more. Mm-hmm. Or maybe some other guilds are going to take the spotlight and, uh, you know, capture more castles than other guilds. Yes. And I'm excited for, what guild is that? Sword again? Yeah. Huh, sword. That yeah, that soul, yeah, that soul royal guard. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Arsenal is going to be able to take two castles. I think they are defending two castles right now. Kremhild, uh, of course. And Nonsense always, you know, Nonsense is always consistent into capturing a castle. They always have a castle since the very beginning. Yes. They oh. never had a War of Imperium session without a castle. Uh, from from what I've seen, they never had a, a War of Empires session without a castle at the end. So they always had at least a single castle. Yes. So, you know, I think uh, Nonsense is just getting ready for future battles. They're mm-hmm. not yet uh, up to par with, uh, you know, larger guilds. But they are getting ready. They are, you know, uh, well, how can I say this? Uh, building their core so yes. they can be better. Or they can be stronger. Okay. Wow. And Dominari. that's the last minute break. Hohin Shuanggo actually just captured... Uh, uh, no, no, actually, uh, War Prepare is finished, sorry. And uh, Hohin Shuanggo has been uh, captured by goons. I think that was taken by... Uh, I think that Dominari earlier, but only a few members just... Uh, only a few members were defending. And yeah, and... Think- uh, DS, DS Cartel, Cartel has, has one. Uh, they has uh, they have two. They have uh, Father yeah. Four and Britonia one. But Dominari, wow! Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm kind of excited into seeing uh, these guilds step up since Opus Day is recruiting more members uh, to their guild. Steel Wolves are kindly uh, are slow slowly stepping up to the game as well. They are they are capturing castles. But they are not showing themselves just yet in every battle, so maybe they are just uh, being cautious, or maybe don't they don't have that much numbers currently to uh, you know deal with uh, every other guild. But mm-hmm. we haven't seen them so uh, uh, in battle so much. Yes. So maybe they are just uh, capturing castles to boost up their their resources. Yep. And again, now uh, we know that. Uh, I mean, I think they're just waiting for the big event. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. I think uh, they're just waiting for uh, the pointing system event again, right? Um, yeah. And yeah, again, um, we're actually hoping that the uh, last night we can um, that we can actually see them have a quick uh, fight again on our next session with mm-hmm. our you know with Dominari, the Cartel. Yeah, we want to see them on the next uh, War of Imperium. Yeah. So. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, you, you can continue, they're sorry. Good. They're good. They're good. Yeah. They're really good. And uh, I like uh, how they play the game. And I think they're the only girl that I saw that they one push the Red Dominari. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited for their girl. And I want to see a matchup versus uh, uh, Cartel and uh, Last Night Mirror as well. 
I think that's my yeah. uh, my wishes for the next Warframe Imperium. Yeah, I hopefully see you can see a lot more guilds participate in Warframe Imperium, and uh, a lot of our guilds currently are now stepping up. So, looking forward to the next Warframe Imperium session. Again, Warframe Imperium or WOE is every Saturday and Tuesday, 9 to 11 p.m. GMT plus 8. Mm-hmm. And a uh, quick shout out to all the viewers watching right now. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, tuning in with us for tonight's Warframe Imperium session. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is it for tonight's WOE or War of Imperium. <laughs> we are your casters. My name is James. Hey, my name is MG. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.